Okay, so we have our handy. So, what did we learn about J? You guys spent an hour and a half looking at this program. What did you learn about it? That's a percent S. What does that mean? Maybe format string vulnerability. So maybe format string. So how? Okay. So, but walk me through for the new people. How did you get to this point? So, what was the first thing you did? Object dump, maybe. Yeah. The very first thing you did. No strings. Strings. Well, you you run it the first time. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Actually, you run. Yeah. Well, we did strings both first. But yes. Okay. Cool. So, what does this tell me? There's a, a string in here that has percent S in it. Yeah. Right, so what does this tell us? They were loading the flag. Uh, yeah, that it's at least using printf, right? We can see up top that here the printf ASCII is in here. And yeah. here we see here's a string which has percent %s, which means this is probably using this as part of a format string. We also see other interesting things here. We see the word flag, that's always nice. <laughs> we see .txt, okay, whatever. But we flag. see flag judgment system, input flag, unprintable character, wrong flag, correct flag. Right. All, because at this point we have no idea what this is, all they've given us is a binary. So we need to understand it as much as we can. So now, so now we'd probably run it, right? Mm -hmm. slash J. No, we, don't. we have a flag.txt oh. now, so. Okay, normally we wouldn't see this. <coughs> so I'd run it. I'd say loading flag.txt failed. Where did this come from? This output. Flag judgment system. This flag specifically. Where did we see this before? In. In the string. Okay. Uh, Boom, right? It's saying loading percent %s, right? Format string percent %s means substitute that with a string. So it's substituting in the so Basically, we can say, hey, loading flag.txt failed. The next thing we should think about doing is, why don't we try creating a file called flag.txt, right? Cool. OK, now we want to run it again. Now we see flag judgment system, input flag. So I'd probably do something that is definitely not the flag, just hello, tell me it's the wrong flag. I'd probably just try a bunch of A's. It says wrong flag. I then, then probably try the exact same flag. Interestingly, it cut off your input, though. Uh, yeah, so it didn't. So this means it didn't actually read all of the A's, right? That's kind of interesting. There's a string length uh, call inside the assembly. What was that? There's a string length call. Sweet. OK. So we get flag.txt. We see flag judgment system, input flag. But here, where did I give this from? Right, so this I'm redirecting the input of, or the standard input of this executable J. When it reads in, it's going to read in from this file. So it read in obviously the exact same flag. But where did this come from? I never typed this in. Your file. So how does that correspond to up here? Yeah. It checks if the. Now you entered the value flag. It is, but why did I see I am the flag when I did not type anything? I'll do it again. You oh. inputted the file. So where did that come from? From the flag.txt. So does the same thing appear here when I say hello? Where is it? Standard. Mm -hmm. Help. 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 Yeah. Right. I have two hellos. Uh -huh. yeah. right. It's telling me what I put in and then mm -hmm. telling if it's right or wrong. Just more information that we know about the program. Okay. Um, let's see. Where do we, which way do we want to go in this? What did somebody do next? Let's just go in a random direction. Object dump. Object dump? So wait, so object dump does okay, takes. Up later. Do what? 
I can look it up later. Okay. I went over it for some people. Okay. Uh, so this is the entire binary. It's trying to interpret it as x86 instructions. So we don't have the source code to this application. All we have is the binary file, right? So now what should I do next? Look for some functions. Looks for some functions. How do I look for that? Uh, try it. Search for it. Search for what? Load function or load flag, I think was one. Or yeah. main. Yeah. Yeah. So load flag, that would be a good guess. <laughs> yeah, that was an excellent main, random I would guess. Say is usually one you'd want to start with. So you can see kind of what it's doing. And I can see calls here to printf. That's interesting. A call to a I'm not doing this. Uh, call to get end lines, call to puts, call to printf, call to string compare, call to puts. So if you don't know what any of these mean, you should look up the man page of each of these, right? And remember, refresh yourself on what exactly it does and what the semantics are, because these are very important. Um, if you have a different kind of disassembler, like uh, Hopper, which is very nice, a uh, Mac disassembler or there's IDA is another option. You get basically the same-ish thing, slightly different, but it does have some nice features. Like Hopper can generate some pseudocode looking like this. Um, so we can see here, it's actually interesting, a call to printf of loading percent %f failed. This looks like what we got when our flag was not correct, right? That's interesting. Uh, we can go to the main function here, we can kind of see what, but you can see that even with tools like this, it's still not really clear what's going on, right? But we can even see in here some things that we want, right? So we have flag judgment system, new line input flag, right? That's what we see. We have unprintable character, that's interesting, wrong flag, correct flag, and you got to understand, and you, I think one of the skills that you have to learn when you're doing this reverse engineering things is that you don't always know what, you have to be okay with not knowing what the hell is a stack 2047 is arc 0 plus 0x FFFFFFC. No idea what this is. It's trying, what this program's doing is it's trying its best to turn the x86 code into C code and it's often going to fail. So we have to be okay with saying like, okay, that's probably garbage, like whatever. I'll, I'll come back to it if I need to, but for now I just ignore it. Um, so I see, you know, some interesting things in here. I don't know. So, yeah. It, it was good, like. What? Um, what do you want? So you see, like the else, you have mm -hmm. correct flag. So the else that corresponds the is correct. Uh, you have the if and it's comparing uh, the base pointer plus some address plus something that, that's on the stack, so we should be looking at those. That might Maybe. Sense. Yes, so, okay, so there's a couple things, right? We need to know what's our goal, what do we want from this? Like, do we sure. want the program to tell us correct flag? But maybe we have to get the correct flag. Well, well what's our ultimate goal? Like, we're get in the a flag. competition. Get the flag. Get the right in. Yeah, we need to get the flag, right? That's Ultimately, if we could, well, if we could bribe the people to tell us exactly what the flag is, then we got the flag. <laughs> Super cool. Um, uh, we're never going to do that. Expensive. Oh, I don't think we have enough in our budget. A oh, will's not here. Um, <laughs> you're the treasurer, maybe you know the banker. Um, so, anyways, so we don't, you know, we don't. It's kind of weird, right? It's almost you can think of these as red herrings. Correct flag, wrong flag. I don't care as long as I get the flag. Right? Maybe I do, there is some way I can use this behavior to my advantage, right? But ultimately I want to find the flag. And this is where we get some of the, um, maybe remember the name of the website? There we go. Uh, score, the CTF Western. Um, Judgment. Yeah, so the, do they have the problem? On the left. Uh -huh. Sweet, I don't need to sign in, but I don't Found want to Oh, do we know the password? Uh, the Are we okay one? with sharing it with everyone? The, 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 P, the P is capital in there, pound the nose. And, then and the, the password, password is pound lowercase pound the nose. Wow, you guys. <laughs> Super good security. <laughs> we team. went all out on that one. I think I'm going to post this video publicly on YouTube now. I think it's going to be good. <laughs> okay, so we have judgment, right? So one thing is, we can see here that they have various genres or categories, right? 
So we can see a bunch of pwns. So pwn usually means pwnable. So it's going to be something that's vulnerable. So you should think format string or you know format string, heap overflow, buffer overflow, ROPs, all those kinds of techniques that we looked at for exploiting binaries. That's usually what it'll be. But the key thing is judgment is different, right? It is a warm up, which so means it should be easier. So that's also something we need to keep in mind because if we start to find something and then we go, oh man, I'm gonna develop this super cool crazy exploit and be like, wait a minute, would they really want me to do this super crazy exploit just to get the flag for the very first level that's supposed to be a warm up? So that should help us help ourselves in some sense. Okay. Cool. Uh, what do I do? Okay, so we're back here. You had an in you had some interesting input there. Oh. I had some interesting input. So let's think about all the things that we saw, right? And let's think about where they kind of match up in the program, right? So if we think of main just from the start. So one thing we don't see starting from main is the reading <coughs> in of the flag or anything like that, right? We don't see that string that was um, couldn't load flag.txt, right? So that may tell us that something actually happens before we get to main. That could be a first hint, right? Because that didn't, what we're looking at here does not match up with the behavior that we saw. So there must be additional code that we haven't seen. Okay. There's a so function we, called init. So there is a function called init. We'll go back there in a second. Okay, so we do have this printf, right? We see flag judgment system, new line input flag. We saw that. Great, awesome. So let's kind of step through. It's doing something here. Then it's saying get end line, passing in. So the other thing that's tricky when you're looking at this, so you know what, let's look at it here because this will be easier. Um, so we have the printf, we have flag judgment system, new line input flag, so that's interesting. Uh, then we have the get end line. So we can see what is it doing here. So it's actually telling us, so one of the nice things about Hopper is it's telling us that this is argument one of end line. So what is argument one? Well, it's moving EBP minus 4C into EAX, then EAX onto the stack. So that's the first argument to get end line. The second argument is 40 into var 60C, and then, wait a minute. No, no, yeah, 40 onto the stack. So this is, so the second argument is the constant value 40. So we were talking about, uh, was I talking about? Where's Garrett? Is he here? He left? Okay. Uh, we were talking about um, this x86 that we're looking at is copying right to left. So it's the opposite of object dump. But you can always check by looking at the constants, right? You can't move this stack pointer into a constant. You can only move a constant in one direction. So you know if you find a constant, you're moving 40 to the left. Okay. So we see get end line. We, I would think, so we know what the program did. It output something and then it got input from us. So if we double click on end line, we'll see it's actually a function that they wrote. So you know, they, they give us a name, it's called get end line. I'm okay with not knowing exactly how it works unless maybe I think I have to look back there because maybe the vulnerabilities in get end line totally could be, right? But what it's passing in here, if you think about it from you, you're the organizer, you're writing a function called get end line. It's taking in two parameters. One of them is what? What's EVP minus 4C? What type of variable is this? What was it? Local. Local, it's a local variable. EVP, so positive offsets from EVP are parameters negative offsets are local variables, constant fixed offsets are gonna be um, global variables. So it's gonna be a local variable, so we're passing that in as the first method to get end line. And then the second argument, we're passing in 40. So what's probably going to be this, what's at EVP minus 4C, do we think? The input file, the dot TXT. So what do we think this get end line is reading in? Your input. Our input. It has to read it in somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was writing this, I would say that this 40 is probably the, um, limit. the limit of how many characters we want to read in for this line. And this 
is the local variable buffer that we're reading in. So I can actually, how do I do it? Eric, do you remember how to rename? Uh, can I do it in here? Yeah, you can, but I don't remember how. All right. So I would write down, or I would no make a note that EBP minus 4C in main is a buffer. Control R, maybe? Oh, Eric. <laughs> I said maybe. <laughs> There you go, name and that's and of course. Uh, which it won't let me do because so it's just a constant. What they would be. Uh, oh, there we go. Maybe it's your Mac messing it all up. All right, that's not working. Okay, cool. So we think that our input that we give is in 4C. So one thing we could look for is we check, ooh, does get endline maybe actually correctly limit the size of characters? Like, could we write over this buffer that we're passing in to get endline to read in more characters? So I think that's actually something that I checked. Um, Did anybody else check that? Like, try to send a bunch of characters in and see if you got a seg fault? Never happened. N the seg fault never happened. Yeah, second like right. round. Okay, yeah, so that probably didn't work. Uh, then we have this jump over the unprintable characters. We can kind of ignore that. It's using puts to output it instead of printf. So then we get to here, and then we see what? Printf. So what does this correspond to in our input that we saw? What we typed in. Correct. Right, so this is the read end line reading in the input, and this came from what? Printf. Printf. Mm -hmm. And if we look in here, how many arguments is printf having here? One. One. And what is it? It's 4c. Uh, the buffer. EBP minus 4c into EAX, EAX onto the stack as the argument, the format argument of printf. It's the buffer. It's the buffer. At this point, we drop everything because we think we have. So how do I? Wow, it's even nice. It even tells you. Yes. Hopper tells you format. Yes, <laughs> argument. So it tells you not only argument one, but it knows the printf uh, command. So it knows argument one is format. Cool. Okay. You can do all this totally in GDB. Um, so how do I verify my idea of what I should, what I think is going to happen? Percent. Yes. He's a percent character. Use a percent character like this? Yeah, and S. Oh my gosh! So what does that mean? <laughs> it means we broke the computer. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Broke the internet. Deletes this is 32. So how can I actually verify it without crashing it? That would tell me. What's this going to do? Print the uh, register. Perhaps. Not uh, register. register. Almost. Address. Stack address. Yeah. The address on the stack. <laughs> Whoa. So, what am I doing here? Printing the stack. Yeah, so I am, so if we look at the man page of printf, it always comes back to the man pages. And I think it's section three, no, two. Oh, printf. <coughs> so we can see printf. Right, and so we can see that this is, if you're rusty on your C, this is actually the dot 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 here is not just like, I'm lazy, I don't want to write all the arguments to printf. Printf, the printf family of functions are, I'm gonna mess up the name, Svaradik or whatever you call them, the, uh, they take a variable number of arguments, there we go. Um, there's a special name for it. So this means that they take one argument as format and they can take any number of arguments. And that makes sense with how we're used to using format strings, right? Because we use them to print out a bunch of variables, right? The address that's in the variables. And depending on uh, like how we do that, right? We have a bunch of different flags, a bunch of different length modifiers. We can print things out as integers, as unsigned ints, as doubles. And so what we're doing here, and this goes back into, uh, you get to refresh yourself on function frames and how specifically they're laid out on the stack. But the idea is when we use a format string of, let's say, percent %x, this tells, asks me to print it out as hex. But printf doesn't actually know how many parameters were passed to it. The only way it knows how many parameters were passed to it is 
you, as part of your format string, telling it each percent x. So each percent x, it's looking up the stack and printing out whatever is there. So all these values, c, this, 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 these are all on the stack, and we can write a quick Python uh, dash c uh, print percent <coughs> x dot times 50, pipe that through j. So now we can see the output of a decent amount. Well, not it's not 50, but a good amount. And I can see it's actually not changing. That's interesting. Oh, it's because I don't have ASLR enabled here. So that's cool. OK, so at this point, some of us, because we remember format strings and we go, oh, I know there's a way to take a format string and get arbitrary code execution and do all this cool stuff and get my shell code in there and then be able to steal the flag. At that point, you remember it's a warm-up. It's, warm it's a warm-up. So what can we do with the format string? What are we doing right here? Write a memory address. We can write memory addresses, and what are we doing here? Printing. Reading memory addresses. Exactly. So we basically have a primitive where we can read a memory address. But what is our ultimate goal? Get the flag. Get the flag. Where is the flag? What do we know about this program? If it thinks um, that you inputted the correct flag, it'll print the correct flag. We don't actually know that yet because we haven't debugged it, but maybe. <laughs> but say, if we can input the correct flag, we know the flag anyways, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's a good point. So how does it do that comparison? It Load must, flag. Oh, yeah, it opens the flag.txt and it's put in a local buffer. So a local variable somewhere. Flag, the that's contents that. of the flag must be somewhere in the memory of this program because it's comparing our input to where the program is. So how do we find it? Good luck. Print it. Help. <laughs> <laughs> no. I go back to here, I look at the functions, this gets us back to our init, I'd say, huh, we never looked at how that flag actually gets loaded, right? But look, it's a function, it says something interesting. So we can look at init, I'm gonna do this view, I think it's a little bit easier. Uh, we have a function called load flag that seems super promising, but look at this. What are we passing in? So we're passing in random junk. Well, let's look at it here. Uh, load flag. So here, load flag. The first method to load flag is passing in EVP plus variable 15. So plus into EAX, EAX onto the stack. So EVP plus 15. Why is it plus uh, hexadecimal? Because it may not be a... Yeah, cause it's a, it is a negative number. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So it's actually... Sorry. Um, so this is a local variable. So let's look through all the arguments here. Argument 3 is the constant value 40. Did we see this before? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was it over there? The limit of the... Yeah, we think it's the limit, limit of the number of characters. So it would probably be safe to assume this is what in this context? Maybe the length of the flag? Yeah, the limit on how many characters to read in from the flag, right? We always have to specify the limits. We have some 804A0A0 passed in here as the second argument. And then the first argument is EBP, the local variable 15. So the first argument is your input, and then the second one is the file. So what do we need to open the flag? Say that again. So what do we need to open the flag? So yeah. it's called load flag. You're writing load flag function. So we already said the third argument is probably the uh, the number of characters to read in, right? So what's a a pointer, what other arguments would you need? A, a pointer, pointer to where the flag is. Yeah, a pointer to a buffer to store the flag. And what else? How do we know what flag to to read from the TXC? Yeah, but how do we know? I mean, load flag. It's called. So how does it know? So you're you're writing it. Maybe you want it to be slightly more general. So if that was the case, you'd only need two parameters. But we know there's three parameters. So maybe you wrote it slightly more general. So then, what other parameter would you pass in the load flag? The address to that. 
the address to what? That's pointer. To what? To what? So we already have the pointer to the buffer where we want to store the results of the flag. We have the size of the flag, the max size of the, that buffer of the flag. What else do we need? A pointer where the flag, the original? The name of the file. The name of the file. Exactly. Which file do we actually open, right? And we could, and one way, here, let's do this very quickly. One way to do that, so it's always good to have ideas about what these things are, but then to verify them with actual execution. So I have a breakpoint on that place. I would run it, and I would inspect the stack. And I would say, OK, local variable something 40. And I'd say, what's this as a? flag.txt. This is a pointer that points to flag.txt. So what do we think this is? The buffer. The buffer. The bu where it places the contents of flag into. Right, where it places the contents of flag, which is what we want to steal. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right? So I verify that by first saying flag, well, okay. oh, well hey. and also it has a symbol name called flag, so that would also tip us off if we were very good about reading the symbols, um, which apparently I'm not, because otherwise I would have taken you there first. This is all good. We can assume we don't have that. Um, then, so I'm, I'm right here, right? I haven't called load flag yet. So you do next instruction. So I do next instruction. A. The string, I am the flag. So, now we know exactly where the flag is located. We think if we can read 0804A0A0 memory location, we can get the flag. So how do we do that? We're in main. We are at this printf. We actually know kind of, sorry, we kind of know what the stack looks like, right? We're stack kind of looks like this. Print all the way up there. To that address. To that address. Um, let's assume, because we have no way to, well, OK, actually, do I have check stack install? Uh, I didn't look like uh, I have it in this one, I think, which is weird. You don't have, you won't have okay, so CheckSec is a GEF thing that tells us what kind of security features it has. So it has a canary, it has non-execute support, so the stack is non-executable. Uh, it does not have PIE support, which means it position a lot of will not be position independent. It or is not, it is not, not position independent. If you have the full uh, no the run full path, no R path, no run path, no partial relocation. Does that still mean the stack though is going to be because it has partial relocation? I don't know what that means. Uh, so let's assume that the stack is changing. It's not. Though. Let's assume the stack is changing, right? So we need to figure out exactly how many the delta we needed from 0804A0A0 A0 to where the current stack is. But if the stack's always changing, we're not going to know that. So what else can we try? So let's think about where we are. So let's, when I'm stuck like this, I want to debug right here. And uh, yeah, if you're going to leave, please leave. I'll just keep recording and you can watch it later. You want, over, you want there? You want at the first printf or the second one? This is the vulnerable printf. This is the second one. Oh, I missed the second one. Sorry. Okay. So I know I'm right here. I have this called a printf. Right? So I actually saw about, 
So if I compare this to what I saw here, I saw 3F, 84, 2D, 58, F7, FF, D3, D0. And so I see the F7, FF, D3, D0. Uh, it looks like, wait, eight, this is the 842 D58, and is this 3F? This obviously gets changed somewhat. So if I run backtrace, I see main. What is backtrace? Backtrace uh, shows you, it basically tries to walk up the tree of the saved instruction pointers to show you who all got executed. But is this thing true? Is main the only thing that ever executed? No. There was something else, right? We Some, mentioned something else executed, yeah. right? And we know that init executed with ec which executed load flag, mm -hmm. which then called some other init junk from the C library, which somehow finally main gets called. So my restrictions are: so can I read any arbitrary piece of memory? With the printf? No, only what's yes. on the stack. Right. The address that I, the only addresses I can read from have to be on the stack. Oh, this is interesting. I think we, you and I may have done it differently because I'm going in a different direction. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, okay. So, I mean, so like what do we want to be on the stack? Like, let's say that uh, this, instead of being 00842D58, it was instead 0804A0A0. Could we get the flag? Yes. Yes. Are we limited in how far we can go up the stack? Yes. How? How are we limited? By the ah, we're limited by the size of the input that we can give, right? So we can't pop and look up 40. But what other features do we know about format strings? Can we access the address? We can access the specific 41st offset. So we can use direct parameter access and do uh, percent 41 dollar sign x to print out the 41st address hex. So using that, we could possibly access any memory address from our current one anywhere up the stack. And so we know main has been called. We know main is called. It's been executing something. Oh, we did do this different. Yeah. Uh, but we know that what else got called? Init load flag. Init load flag. And we saw the code for load flag, right? The code for load flag does what? Let's say, where is it? Three oh, arguments. Uh, it, oh, sorry, yes. So load flag got called by init. So this moved this where? So this is our target value, right? It's actually in two places, but that's cool. So it's here. So where is this moving it? Which location in memory is this moving this to? To the stack. To the stack. Yeah. Plus yeah, so it's moving it somewhere on the stack, and this happened before us. So, init got called, it's doing stuff, copying stuff to the stack, and then load flag gets called, it's copying stuff to the stack, and then main gets called, right? We don't know exactly the order, but my first instinct when I saw this was, maybe this address is already on the stack somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right? Just as a leftover value from when it got copied on the stack here. Mm -hmm. So the way you can check this Oh, there. Um, More than once? In the second column, like somewhere in the middle. No, second. Here? Okay, Second. first, you'll be counting with zero. Yeah. Oh, you're counting, I see. <laughs> That's good. That no, is no, no, the I like it. It's literally the second column of the alpha. So we have right here. And also below. 
and also below. So, if we can literally, well, so we knew that the first one, uh, from up here, we know the first, the second one is 842D58. Eight, eight, so 842D58, eight, eight, so this is 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I think if we run this, we did do it the same way. Wait, it already said that it was 28 offset from did the it? stack. Yeah. Oh. oh, from here you mean? No, from the upper. In which one? Sorry. Here. Uh, right there. ESP huh. plus 28. Oh, but this is... 28 plus, but you don't know what's part. Oh, know. weird. Um, uh, don't know why That's it's That's just it. random. Yeah. Um, That's weird hopper stuff. Stuff, yeah. Because we don't know exactly where that stack that's is. Hex. This is that's hex. That's hex versus yeah, that. yeah. His count is decimal, so... Yeah, yeah. was it 28? Yeah. I don't think uh, it's 28. I dollar sign, sorry. Was it, what did I say, 27? You said 28. Escape dollar sign? Or no? Uh, no, because I'm typing it directly into the program. I can do that, and I see 8B1290. So I say, mm, damn it, that wasn't what I wanted. But I can say, where is 8B1290? Uh, this, the last one. It is. Oh. Where is it? Sorry. The last one. Yeah, so you're one off. Uh, yeah, right, to the right, to the right. Oh, right here? Yeah. yeah. So, so, 28? Yes, yeah, so you were right, 28. So then how do I, so I printed out the value that's there, but how do I read it? Percent, or uh, star? <laughs> star what? I can't do the star. How do I do the format string to read it? How do you print out a string in format string? So it's like this. Percent S. Take this guy. Oh, nice. There we go. And the format for them was so you could tell exactly what the flag is. They prefix it with their um, competition name, a bracket, and then everything inside the brackets is the flag. Mm -hmm. So you go submit that. And there you go. Yay. So yeah, all right. Mm -hmm.